But so now we're going to talk about um, the first of the eukaryotic kingdoms that you're going to need to know about for Bio 101, which are the fungi. And there are about 100,000 species of identified fungi, but there are some estimates by scientists that there could up to be up to 1 million different species of fungi living on this planet right now. And so you probably are familiar with some types of fungi already, um, like these mushrooms you see down here. Um, but some other types of fungi that you might be less familiar with are the molds, which you can see up here on this petri dish, um, the mildews, as well as yeast. Um, and so people don't often know that yeast is actually a fungus. Um, it's unicellular, which means one cell, um, but it's one of the ones that people might not associate when they think of fungi. And so all fungi share certain characteristics, the first of which we've already discussed is that they're eukaryotic, which means their cells have a nuclei and they have um, organelles. All fungi also have a cell wall that protects um, the individual cells from predators as well as from desiccation or drying out. And that cell wall is made of a specific polysaccharide called chitin. And um, although yeast are unicellular fungi, you can see them up here, one single cell, most fungi, almost every other one, is multicellular, uh, which means made of many cells. And so that would be like this mushroom down here on the bottom. And some fungi can actually switch between living a unicellular or single-celled life um, and living a multicellular one based on their environment as well as the nutrition available to them. In addition to being eukaryotic um, and having these cell walls made of chitin and being mostly multicellular, fungi are also non-motile or sessile. They like to live in moist places that are slightly acidic and they can grow with the addition or without light. In addition to that, um, fungi get their food from other sources or other organic sources, so they're what's known as heterotrophic. Hetero meaning different and trophic being energy. So fungi get their energy from a different source. They can't make their own food. And most of the time, fungi are what are known as saprobes, which are organisms that eat decaying organic matter or decomposing matter. And what's interesting about fungi is that they actually will digest all of the food first and then ingest it or take it in later. And so right when we eat a sandwich, we have to ingest it or take it in first and then digest it afterwards um, with the enzymes in our stomach. And what fungi can do is actually secrete or release enzymes that will digest their food first. And then they can take it in or suck it up um, through their different tissues afterwards. And mushrooms, or I'm sorry, fungi reproduce via spores. And so you can see some spores, looks like um, kind of a dust being released from the underside of this mushroom here. As well as some spores in these sort of puffball mushroom that can be seen in this picture. And generally we divide fungi um, by type based on the type of spores that they use for reproduction. And so you can see some different um, classifications of fungi down here, both images and their names. And so you can see some true mushrooms, uh, which are members of this Basidiomycota family, um, all the way down to this particular type of fungi. All of these groups use a different type of spores, and that's how they're classified. And what I want you to really appreciate from this slide is not the names of these specific groups, but the fact that fungi can be really diverse, and mainly we classify them by how they reproduce. We interact with fungi uh, kind of on a daily basis, and unfortunately some fungi can act as pathogens, not only to humans, but also to plants. And so fungi like mold and mildew um, are able to affect plants while they're growing. So you can actually see this growing flower covered in this um, powdery substance is actually a mildew, which is infecting and causing disease to that plant. And then I'm sure we've all had um, a moldy piece of bread or moldy orange or fruit uh, that we've encountered in our own kitchens. 
-hmm. And so fungi can act as pathogens while kind of plants are growing and also on fruit and stuff afterwards. <laughs> and fungi can act as pathogens or disease causing agents towards animals and humans. Some humans are allergic to uh, fungi in terms of mushrooms or um, mold and mildew allergies. Fungi can also be toxic. They can produce um, particular poisons and toxins. In particular, I'm thinking about mushrooms. There are some of them that you're not supposed to eat because they're toxic um, to animals and humans. And then additionally, there are some sort of like infections that can be caused by opportunistic fungi. Uh, one of the most common fungal infections is what's known as a cutaneous mycosis or athlete's foot, which you can see a picture of. Um, yeast infections are also kind of a common infection caused by a fungi as a pathogen. And what you can sort of remember from the previous slide is that yeasts like to live in moist, warm, and slightly acidic places, which makes certain parts of your body, particularly your feet, um, as well as um, the female reproductive system, a great place for fungi to infect. Um, because they can live really easily in that kind of moist, moist and um, warm and acidic environment. <laughs> and in general, in humans, fungal infections are more difficult to treat than a bacterial infection. And so what I'd like you to take to do is to take a second and pause the video and think about why this might be. And what I want you to think about is the type of cell that a fungus is versus the type of cell that a bacteria is. So um, which ones are prokaryotic and which ones are eukaryotic? And how might that affect how easy it is to treat a fungal versus bacterial infection? So take a minute, pause the video and do that. <coughs> okay, and so the reason for this is actually because fungi are eukaryotes whereas bacteria are prokaryotes. And humans, as animals, are also eukaryotes. And so you can imagine that if we found um, some type of drug or cream that killed eukaryotic cells, it would kill fungus, for sure, but it will also kill our own cells along with it. Or as a bacteria, we might be able to find something that's specific to prokaryotic cells, and that drug can kill just bacteria, but will not affect our own bodies or our own cells. So because fungi are eukaryotes, it becomes harder to treat a fungal infection in a human than it is to treat a bacterial one because we run the risk of causing toxicity or death to our own cells as well. One thing that you can do to treat a fungal infection is to find a drug that attacks those cell walls made of chitin, right? And so those are specific to fungi. Humans do not have cell walls um, made of chitin, and so if you could find a way to penetrate that um, and destroy that protective cell wall of a fungus, um, that would be one way to treat fungal infections without affecting humans. And fungi also have some um, ecological benefits, so they're not all bad, right? They're not all going to be pathogens. Uh, fungi are decomposers in sort of that um, nutrient life cycle. And so nutrients get recycled into the soil um, as a result of fungi decomposing them. There are also some symbioses that happen between plants and fungi that are essential for those plants to live. This first word here, my mycorrhizae, is actually a type of fungus that associates with the roots of plants and helps the roots take in nutrients um, and water. And without those mycorrhizae, the plants would not actually be able to live as effectively. And so this symbiotic relationship between plants and fungi is important um, ecologically. And in addition, uh, fungi are tasty, right? So we can eat uh, mushrooms of different types. And so uh, fungi do have some beneficial commercial uses in that respect. Um, in addition, we use fungi for fermentation, particularly yeast. Um, this model organism, S. cerevisiae, is known as baker's yeast or brewer's yeast because um, it ferments <laughs> sugar and allows us to make delicious things like beer and bread. Additionally, some fungi um, are used to make drugs 
um, which is another commercial use that they have. So ultimately, some fungi are pathogenic or harmful. Um, a lot of fungi are beneficial for both ecological and commercial reasons.